of the main man as we can. So, uh, yeah, without a little further ado, uh, here is the Hall Wizard to show you.
is another property of payment. One we've got here, so this is a gas cooker, if you can see that, and this is a, a large gas canister. So I can actually put that, put that on the gas canister, and if I uh, put that down here, you can see the gas canister is inside there, and if I look down on the ground here, you can actually see the gas canister on the ground. I just position that, so... There we go, let's get position. There we go, yeah. So if I take the gas canister off, you can see the gas canister is removed from the the um, things just on the, on the left here, and if I put it back on, it's back on there. Same with uh, things like butane torch. I can put a uh, butane gas canister on it and light stuff and, and have a lot of fun with that. So we've also played around a lot with the, uh, with improvised weapon, uh, sorry, where are we? Somewhere. Should I put a on the ground? No, so um, we've also dealt with a lot, so I've got duct tape in here, so I can actually use that to attach this road flare to this can here, and I can actually create an explosive, an improvised explosive. Unfortunately, it's gone off the screen in my backpack, which is really irritating. But yeah, so we've, we've added um, a bunch of, I've added a bunch of new parking items to like create imp improvised explosives and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, there we go, let's get up here. So you can see here, the improvised grenade, if I look at it, Put it on the ground. I've got a screenshot of it later on. It's a bit closer up, and you can see the spray can is actually being attached to the flare, and you can then throw it and blow people up. The Andy's music's really setting things off. I quite like that. Should probably be a little bit further away. So one other thing I want to demonstrate here is uh, some of the work we've done with the weapon attachment system. Um, so if I go into my video screen here, I can actually put this on. So this is still very work in progress. Notice down here as well, uh, there's a little hand icon saying that that object is in my hands. If I put it away, um, the little icon goes away. So you can actually put any object that you have in your hands. So if I get rid of that, and I put the disinfectant in my hands, you can see, fortunately we haven't got the animation yet. <laughs> Um, that doesn't mean it's not going to be a lot of good against that zombie, so no. Let's, 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 let's not do that. Ow. Yeah, that was really suboptimal. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, so the idea is you can put all these objects in your hands, and I'm just going to run around and run away and find something. Uh, so, what I can do is I can actually put that silencer on the weapon, and if you look now, you can see I've got a silencer on the weapon there. So our, our attachment system is quite uh, flexible, got a lot of different attachments planned. All the weapons that we're actually adding to Daisy are new weapons uh, that, we're, that we're going to be adding. And uh, we're re remaking them all again. You probably notice this, uh, this AK looks uh, quite a bit different. And yeah, we want to make sure that the 80s music is really starting to put me off now. Yeah. <laughs> I could definitely see a lot of trolling going on in the game with that. Uh, one other thing I demonstrated at E3 was all the effort we're, we're putting in to having work spawning in quite dynamic locations. So we're really trying to make all the interiors look, look really good and, and just be really different. Any of the, any of like the, uh, uh, doors and that you can't enter, we're going to be putting uh, wood across them so that it's, that, you know, you know that you can't actually enter in on them. So, no, I can't jump over that door apparently. Let me get something in the back here. Here we go, transfusion back. Oh. She likes me very much. So, as usual, we, we still haven't got the uh, sinking at the moment of the attacks. I'm going to run out of ammunition here, it's going to be really embarrassing. At least I've got away from that damn ammunition music. Um, yeah, so you can see up in the top right, uh, see if the foot damage value is actually increasing. So we actually have uh, different uh, durability values for different footwear, and different material that you actually run on will increase damage on either your feet themselves or the shoes themselves. 
So if I take my if I take my shoes off and run around, my feet will slowly get damaged if I run on things like concrete or I, particularly if I sprint, if I run on things like uh, uh, gravel and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then yeah, it makes it, it makes a huge difference uh, for the player. They end up where motion capturing it next week with a uh, damaged animation, damaged series of animations that basically you're limping around and you're injured and all that kind of stuff. So give you a nice look, we were doing it before, I'll actually slow down the time so you can see some of the, the animations here. We put a lot of work into trying to make them look, uh, you know, look better. This is a new, new player skeleton. There's still some improvements to happen with that because we haven't removed uh, the old configuration that we have. Uh, so there's still, yeah, there's still a few more improvements that we can actually get with that. At least I've got rid of, got rid of those, those zombies. What I might do is... There we go. And if I do a little hop there, you can see the hop is... Uh, we're, we're pretty pleased with hop. It feels a lot... The, the game feels a lot more fluid uh, than it had been previously. And now we can start coming here. Yeah, uh, so another thing that you end up having to do to protect against disease is use purification tablets. We've demonstrated that at E3 as well. And uh, and we've also been implementing, unfortunately I was trying to get it working before, but I couldn't, was scavenging. So you're going to be able to go around the trees, go to the trees, select an option to harvest wood from it, pick up grass from the ground. All this kind of stuff is going to become useful in terms of crafting. And uh, all those situations where I, I was putting the disinfectant in my hand, you can actually uh, you can actually use that object either to bash people with, or if I put an object on the ground now, like uh, a gas canister, and I actually look at the gas canister, I put disinfect it in my hand, I can actually disinfect the item with what's in my hand. Yeah. So we've been expanding the world quite a lot. You can see here, I was talking about the little icon over the hand. Obviously the UI is still placeholder, there's still a lot of work uh, that we're doing on it, but we're, we're pretty happy about the progress we've been making with it. We think it's a lot more fluid um, than it was previously, and uh, particularly the idea of the, the way we're doing the backpacks and things like that, I think it's, it's, it's making things a lot easier. The, the values we've got here are only temporary, so you can see the six slots for the shoes, six slots for the pants, that's actually, basically we just haven't finished balancing that yet. And uh, yeah, so, so all that's going to change. What I'm going to show you inside here is, and I didn't get killed by the door, which is, which is great, is uh, how we're doing now the loop spawns. So you can see um, that uh, the loop now spawns some of it floating. Um, uh, basically, all around the world, you actually have to walk around and pick stuff up. And you can, you can either do it by looking at it and picking it up, or if it's very close by, you can actually use the vicinity. But see how that's not close enough. So, and it really encourages you to look around and find stuff um, and actually scavenge the stuff. So if you look at uh, hunger there, you can see that at the moment my hunger is negative. So I'm going to eat a can of beans here and you should see it go even further down. So it means that's how many calories basically below um, being hungry that I am. If I go in and do some hackery uh, using our development console here and I will set myself up so that I am really hungry. Oh, actually, I'll do, I'll do I'm a little hungry. Over so you can see now I'm starting to get uh, context information in the bottom left there saying they're feeling hungry. If anyone's used um, Space Station 13 before or played a game like that, it's a very similar kind of prospect, something like uh, an adventure game, where it's telling you what's going on. And I think uh, the procedure that we're going to go with from here is for the initial alpha, pretty much everything will be provided down there. But as we get the chance to and experiment with it, we'll be replacing it with animations that are placed on your player, we'll be replacing it with sound effects and all those kinds of things. A lot of people have been complaining that the sounds are the same from Arma 2, they, they are. Uh, but sounds are something we want to replace once we've nailed the gameplay down. So we've uh, just bought the guy who did, or the guys who did the zombie sounds on the mod. Uh, they've got their own little sound studio, so we're bringing them back on board uh, to redo, along with some other people, all the sounds in the game. Everything from eating to drinking, all the different weapons, everything does get redone, but it's, it's something we have to leave until, until later on. 
And uh, water is the same kind of thing as well. Um, drinking and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, we've got actually got sound at the end. So you can see um, this first goes down there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them a little bit more hungry. Uh, let's make them really hungry. So uh, eventually, every now and then, you'll see, uh, you'll see context stuff starts to pop up. And uh, I guess it's important to note, and because I'm trying not to say those four things really to say, but I say too much and I've got a drinking game about. Uh, because of the approach that we've taken with the way the server is set up, uh, the, uh, all the status messages are generated on the server. So that, that makes a really big impact on hacking. It means that you can't create items on your character, uh, your character can't set its own variables and values, any of those things basically can't happen. These, these variables you see in the top right, they don't even exist on your client. The server controls your client completely. If you disconnect from the server, it means that your, uh, uh, your, your character is still there for a period of time, which we're hoping will help us with the, uh, oh, yeah, that nice little error popped up. Little zombie couldn't find me. Um, yeah, so it, it, it basically means that we can start dealing with issues like the combat logging and things like that, that we know are big issues for people from the, from the mod itself. Yeah, so I guess the big question that a lot of people have is when we're actually going to get this out. And uh, the, the period that we are, we, we've set a date now, uh, like a window of about a week. And we're not going to, we're not going to say that when that is, because we, we originally were going to release them in 50,000 key increments, but we've decided to do kind of everything all together. And, uh, so we, we really want to focus on making sure the architecture is good so, so that we can get things back. It's going to be nice if we finish by some of these music. It's going to be nice to start dancing. So I've got some other dance on it. Um, so another thing I wanted to show is I wanted to show some these are screenshots because we haven't changed the way map mapping works in the uh, uh, in the inventory screen. I wanted to show some uh, captures. These are from our model viewers, so they don't even include normal map or specular uh, of some of the new the new stuff that we're putting in. We're going for very low poly but very high uh, detail. A lot of work put in them to try and make them look realistic and as good as possible, and uh, low poly so that we get much better performance. And one thing that we have got from a lot, of, a lot of feedback from people is why doesn't Daisy look like Armour 3? Uh, a tremendous amount of effort went into Armour 3, many, many years worth of work. We didn't want to delay Daisy for that period of time. Armour 3 runs on DirectX 11. We felt it's very important that Daisy has good performance on lower end PCs as well as high end PCs because it has great frame rate, 60, uh, 60 FPS on higher end PCs, it means it can then run and support things like Oculus Rift and all those sort of awesome things as well. So we really want to support that. So every item that we bought in game that was in Armour 2 is being redone. Uh, we've got a really talented bunch of artists doing things. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you're going to be able to combine them together. So this is an example there of a timed improvised uh, explosive with a road flare, can of spray paint and a kitchen timer, some wires. You see the batteries there that you have to put on your walkie-talkie. Something I couldn't demo here uh, is you can use those little walkie-talkies within a range of, and we've got them set at the moment, one kilometre to talk to each other. Uh, anywhere from zero to one kilometre, it slowly starts fading out and gets less and less useful. We know people use things like TeamSpeak and that, but it can be really useful for like monitoring people and stuff like that. And this is um, uh, yeah some of the examples of the IB starter kit and stuff like that. So what we're actually working on at the moment, this is saline here that you can use to increase someone's blood pressure if they've lost a lot of blood. But we're also uh, doing the same thing with having a kit that you can actually uh, click, click blood from yourself, click blood from other people. And we're experimenting with the idea of having a uh, <laughs> blood test to see, uh, you can get those little cards in real life and you can find out what blood type you are. But a lot of this stuff is still, I guess, experimental. We really feel like we have to get the alpha out and start getting player feedback on, on where we're at here. Yeah, oh, and uh, there's a whole bunch of tools. 
he can interact with the world, he can go up to vehicles, remove car battery from the vehicles, that kind of stuff. And uh, that's an example, so a few people probably have this actual map at home, so when you find a map, you want to make sure, yeah, try and immersion, make sure everything kind of fits together. And that's an example there of the, the camping stove. These are the actual in-game models, the level of detail on them. Very low poly, but you know a lot of work has gone into the textures. The guy, I think Joshua Dentman is, is the guy who, who's been helping us a lot. He's got a lot of experience with a lot of games, and is very fast. We've got him on some pretty cool stuff at the moment, like syringes. Yeah, has a little place that space game that occurs <laughs> on a large vessel in space, and it's got a number thirteen in it. I hope that still counts. There's one person there; they, they figured it out. So anyone here will remember you can do really cool things with syringes. So we've got syringes coming up again. Yeah. yeah, duct tape. Duct tape's going to be really useful. So that's it there. So I thought now, I don't know how much time we've used up, if we could move into the QA. We probably don't need to look at the duct tape. Let's look at it. Yeah, that's a lovely image to, uh, to, to have in the background. We've got about 10-15 uh, minutes of questions. So uh, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hands. Uh, I think we've got the first on the quickest in the drawers down here. Hey. You know, Hang on, could you just hold on a second before I get a microphone to you? Uh, if you could um, stand up when you're uh, asking the question, that would be amazing, thanks. My phone guys can use all the Well, yeah, I've worked the arm 3 Alpha, and the best feature in it, I thought, was, you know, the stat system. Yeah. Like, is that going to be in day Z, or are you going to leave it out, because it's going to be, like, more civilians going about, instead of, like, training military people? Because I really like, you know, the stand is just above prone. Like, we didn't need it, but stands. I mean, we, you know, that's, like, our favorite stance in the game, because it's, like, so low profile, so we did it yeah, so um, I demonstrated at E3, I guess I tried not to demonstrate too much stuff uh, again in case people had seen it, uh, some of the, the stance changes at E3. So there's a guy, a really talented guy called Vespa, and he's one of the, the guys along with a bunch of programmers on the ARM3 team who's responsible for the stance stuff. Before stances were implemented on ARM3, he was quite vocal about them and really wanted to see them changed as well as uh, Pavel, who uh, people will know from the community in Bohemia uh, and uh, in, in Arma. Uh, and he did a lot of work on uh, on an animation mold and stuff like that. So those guys are really instrumental in the Arma 3 thing. We actually brought Vesper onto the project for a couple of weeks and got him to come up with a stance system that he felt fitted in with Daisy. So I didn't really show it there, but yeah, there's, there is definitely, you can actually, while you're running along, change, your, change the way you move. We don't want it to feel as military though. We want it to feel like you're a dude running around, you know, with a nice Russian hat. No blood stunts then. Say again? No blood stunts. No, not really. You, you'll notice if I did it, you, you can push T and you, you change your stance a little bit. But yeah, not 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 quite like the Arm 3 one, but the same vein. We've still got a way to go with that before we really achieve uh, what we wanted with it. Alright, next one. Cool. Any more questions? That's one of the boundaries there. Wait to get the microphone to you. Well, the recent addition of um, the radio stations, mm -hmm. um, the zombies also be attracted to the radio stations because the players can also hear them. Yep, uh, so zombies are attracted to, uh, you know, sight obviously, sound, so firing a rifle, radio stations, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anything that makes noise, they'll get attracted to, but they might not get very interested in it, or they might destroy it, uh, depending on what the item is. Uh, same with, they can actually track players as well now. I guess it's probably relevant to, perhaps has got a question about it. Zombies now spawn uh, right at the start of the mission, so it spawns all the zombies across the whole map. And every town has a zone area around it. If you clear all the zombies in that, uh, that area, they're not going to respawn until human players leave that zone area. But, and this is the big part, there are other zombies that roam around the map and they can come back into that area and, and cause you quite an issue. And we're looking at, we're not sure about it because I, I trialed it, but I'm not sure whether this kind of blows our whole, we, we, you know, we don't want to manufacture situations. But we're, if you don't do anything for a long period of time when you're sitting there, then you're more likely to have a zombie swarm walk through your area. So, so that's one area that we're looking at there. I hope that answered your question. I kind of wondered if it was quite uh, like a zombie. We've got another question in the over. So. What it comes to like weapons and stuff, how many sort of like 
varying sort of things with it again. Because she said, you know, I'm back to have sort of like civilian, not all of the military, so someone running around like an S50 and popping people in the head. So, like, what is like the range of like, like what's the kind of top mark, kind of weapons we're talking about? Well, what we're, what we've decided to do, so now that we're really committed to doing a, a really, I guess, a lot more beefier alpha than we originally intended, particularly because there's a lot of expectation around it. I'd be talking about this centralised loop spawn mechanic, and the more I talk to the CCP guys, the more I run that E3, the more I realise we really need to do that. So we're looking at actually rolling that out with the alpha. What that means is the game server, so say you set up your own server, it doesn't calculate what loop spawns where. Uh, so that means that game server doesn't have access to the spawn values. So that means loop maps can't be made, which we felt helped a great deal for immersion. In addition to that, there are certain items that are controlled centrally by a server economy. So all the game servers across all the world, there can only be X number of this. An example being thermal weapons. We could set it so that there is only one thermal weapon for everyone in the entire Earth. And, uh, and we, we want to do that. We, we want to have super rare items that there's only, can only be one of at any one time. If it gets lost or it gets destroyed, then, you know, then another one's available to spawn in. And that's how we want to deal with the high-end stuff. We're also, like I said, we're redoing all the weapons, so we're not porting any of the weapons directly across from Arm 3. We're also, at the moment, focusing on weapons that allow some degree of customization. Uh, yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah, it does, man. We've got, uh, one more, we've got a question over here and then we'll get back to you guys in a second. Hi, um, at the moment, in the Armour 2 engine, a player has quite a massive advantage if they turn down all the graphical settings, like even to the point of disabling certain trees and rocks and things. Uh, I personally think the game is better when it looks prettier and it's harder to spot people, but if you play like that, you're at a massive disadvantage. So will that be all the same for everybody as that hardcore is that set? At the moment, we have, we're kind of taking a mixed stance to it. So there's been a number of changes made. One of them is, actually, it comes from take-on helicopters. So what we did is we took the take-on helicopters engine, and last year, we were, we were originally just going to basically tidy it up, pop Daisy into it, and release it. We decided that wasn't worthwhile. So we ended up gutting the take-on helicopters engine and building up from there. The take-on helicopters engine was designed for helicopters, not surprisingly. And and they played with the way view distance and object distance and grass distance was handled a great deal with that. So we get the benefits from that. We've also been looking at forcing a lot of settings server-side, and that's how object distance and view distance is now forced server-side. There's no way for your client to change that. And there's a bunch of other graphic settings that we can do that with as well. But I think we need to allow a little bit of flexibility for that, because there may be some game communities that want to run servers that are safe for people with lower performance and things like that. So we want to allow some flexibility to server hosters so they can turn different stuff on and off. And I think that controlling it at that game level, the game server level is better than controlling it at the game level and saying everyone has to run it on ultra or everyone has to run it on medium. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Too. Thank you very much. We've got a question over here. Hey, I love the demo regarding, I know you said about looking through base building systems for it, so the end of like development and um, how about if you sort of implement maybe like a key system on certain builds that are only actual by like one or two builds in the world with like five, ten keys in the entire server world where you could only have to sit and build a kind of key like from text on live or on city and sort of uh, city like just one or two months. How will that like work or controls the possible? Yeah, so um, Yoka, uh, one of our, he's a programmer who come up with the inventory system and stuff like that, working with our CEO, Mark, while I, while I was away. Uh, they actually even started looking and talking about lockable containers as well as lockable doors. There are some issues, because Armour was never really designed well, for anything we're doing, but particularly uh, for interior type stuff. So we have to do a lot of work, and you can see this with the zombie AI and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of work that has to be done to bring it up to, to speed with what we need it to do. And so, yeah, like an example of a building that we're working on at the moment that we want in for the Alpha is uh, a, police, a police station that has a lockable armory. Because uh, we think that that would sort of be a bit better. Maybe we have to get like crowbar and crowbar off the lock or you know, get 
get some explosive, set up an improvised, you know, explosive and blow it up. So that's, that's definitely on our cards, and it's on the cards for Alpha, actually. Yeah. Cool. I've got another question. Yeah, so uh, I guess it, it comes back to one of the points that I made before, which is performance and security are really the two most important things that we've been focusing on. And we've been sacrificing graphics and other things for those two things. One of the problems with the previous zombies is, and I don't get too geeky and technical, but they had many different textures and model parts and materials on them. And that's really bad for graphics performance. Well, not bad, but particularly if you had a lot of large numbers of them, it was quite problematic. And it was something that the Armour team, Armour 3 team did really well. They did let's see, incredibly customizable like AI and stuff that Armour 3 had. So they had to do a lot of performance optimizations to get that working. With DayZ, we were kind of lucky because we sort of had this one very simple type of antagonist that we can replicate many times. So we've actually made them one texture, one model, one object, which gives us a significant performance increase and allows us to have more zombies. Unfortunately, that means that uh, you can't you can't have it so you can take something off it because it's all one model. Uh, and I think we're going to stick with that just because of the performance that we have. Um, next one was, um, will wounds be visible on the table? So say that you break your leg, will you see that and also showing the gear menu. Yeah, so we've got a concept that will be showing, should be implemented actually next week for how the damage system is going to work. We also want it so you can examine an item, kind of like, does anyone remember a Tomb Raider? You could like bring up the item and check it out and that. And, uh, and so you're going to be able to like examine and look at an item in, in detail. Because one of the biggest architectural changes we made was that in armor, objects were kind of, there were many different kinds of objects. In DayZ, all objects are basically vehicles. So they can all have damage applied to them, they can have their own animations. We can animate a helmet to have, uh, have a visor that comes down, we can have the, the helmet have a damage texture. So as your shoes get damaged, there are progressively two different textures that show up. So you can even see visually on another character how damaged their items are, and, and even more so when you've got them on in your inventory. So yeah, I think I answered part of that. Do I answer the whole thing? Not sure. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was a journey. <laughs> um, I'll only ask one more so a little bit nice as well. Um, there's a combat body. Um, what's going to be done to stop that? Oh, right, yeah. And also, um, how does it, how are you going to stop people being alerted to someone logging in the area? Like, you know, you reset, you know, zombie formation because it spawns inside the server, but things like that. Yeah, I think the first thing I'd say is that, uh, this is stuff that we work out in the alpha. Like, there's not enough of us developing it, there's not enough people testing it now to get the metrics we need. We have awesome metrics from Daisy the Mod, but this game is so different from the Mod, in a good way, that what we feel is we need to open it right up, get hundreds of thousands of people play it, collect all the data, and then see how we can tidy it up. A lot of that's going to be going on the forums, going on Reddit, getting people's opinions, seeing if those opinions match up with the metrics we have and then coming up with the system. But we know at least stuff like a combat logout timer, so if you disconnect, you know, your player sits down for 30 seconds before you log out, like kind of well style. And those kind of simple things, they're very easy for us to do now with the, oh, I nearly see that read I nearly see the little drinking game things. So with the new system we have in place for a multi we have a question over here. Hello. Yeah. I wonder uh, if you have gas canister on the ground, mm -hmm. can you shoot it? Will it explode? Burn it, yeah. Can you have gas <laughs> on the ground? Yeah, so again, that, that kind of comes back to my point before. Now, all the objects in the world effectively act like vehicles in the engine. It's, it's quite a big deal for us, that change, because it just allows us to design a new. We can, for example, have that gas canister have different damage textures. It can have different variables assigned to it, like does the can canister contain cholera on it, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's one thing that, that we're, we're doing. We haven't implemented yet because we're redoing the way the explosions work. But yeah, you shoot a gas canister, it blows up. You shoot a radio, it just breaks. 
and you don't get IDs either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, when you first came out, the biggest appeal was you can have a player not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. So you have no idea what the social convention is, you wouldn't talk to them, and that's really fun. Now, when you have a proper play occasion, you're going to find the next game is you don't want to interact with players. You see them, you either shoot them, or you go off the parties. Is anything going to change in some sort of the details to encourage players to interact with each other more? Is that going to be Yeah, I mean, I can't say that it's going to work. Like, we're just, we're just trying stuff. And that's, I guess, that's why we, we kind of feel pressure now to release the alpha as well, because we want to get feedback. So one example I'll pull is I think the new medical system is very, I think it's going to have an impact on, and I hope it's going to have an impact, because there's now already we've got hundreds of items in game and we haven't even released. We're looking at thousands of items. And some of it's like, for example, so we've, we've got the syringes coming in and you can get antibiotics like amoxicillin and ciproflaxin and doxycycline, all these kinds of different kinds of antibiotics that really exist in the real world. And you need to figure out which antibiotic do I have to use to treat, for example, cholera. And uh, you can find cholera vaccines, all those kinds of stuff. And some of those really rare items are controlled centrally by the server, like, for example, a cholera vaccine. I think that's going to be, you find a cholera vaccine, it's like hitting the jackpot, because that's an incredibly heavily tradable item. So there was a TV series I watched while I was at Everest called, a very old one, um, I, had around, I had the DVD for ages, called Jericho, and I think people might remember that. There were some cool times in it when they went, they, they had to go to the trading zone. They didn't want it, they didn't want to trade, but they needed to, because uh, they needed to build like, I don't know, whatever, a Ferris wheel or wind turbine, something like that. And um, yeah, so, so that's, that's what we're hoping to implement, is that because of the increased level of complexity in the medical system, you really you 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 can do it on your own, but you are going to need to trade. You can you can be a lone wolf. It's going to be really difficult, but you are going to need to trade. So we're hopeful that this will result in at least negative, uh, sorry, at least neutral interactions, i.e., tense trading between players. And we do have plans for some kind of UI that allows players to transfer their items between each other. You know, kind of like I hold a can in, you know, in this hand and I tell you to put a can of Pepsi in the other hand and you kind of do this kind of thing. So we want to kind of model that. And, yeah. I mean, does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, we have a question. Uh, hi. Um, Hello. With the, uh, as you were going to with the thirst and hunger and the effect on the cold, etc. When you said, obviously, you eat something and it fixes your hunger, um, of course, there's a level where if you say to have something like soup, it should theoretically, does it affect both? Yeah, it does. Oh, look, I should have shown that. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so an example being, so now items have resources assigned to them, and they can be many. So an example is the, the cola, for example, gives you, I think it's 160 calories and then 350 mils of liquid. Uh, so you get calories from it and liquid, but you also get sugars. And if you eat too many sugars, you can have problems if you're a long-term survivor. Like if you just went around drinking um, colas, yeah, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to be like vomiting. And, yeah, or really, like, you're really hyperactive. Hi, you Hello. Hello. mentioned ducting earlier. Yeah. Ducting is Excellent. I wondered what you were going to ask about the duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else was as well. So what was that? Repairing stuff. Ah, okay. Repairing stuff. No, I didn't think about that. Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess the, the, the use we're looking at for the alpha is taping stuff around, like, like attaching. So for example, you saw the road clear with the, uh, with the spray can. Yes. The, the spray can has many uses. Spray can, you can use it to spray your weapon and your color, uh, or you can use it to blow someone up. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the, the repairing is something we, need, we want to look at a bit more in depth because we think there's a few, I say this and this word is going to haunt me. You will know that you're at the point when this word is going to haunt me. There will be several classes that develop of players, but they won't be classes we make, they'll be classes that the players generate through the play style. So for example, I think people will 
become experts in medical stuff, and people will become experts maybe in repairing stuff, or maybe they'll become experts in both. So we haven't actually nailed down how the repair mechanics are going to work. The main reason being because I want to do that and like I guess dovetail in with how we're doing the vehicle repairing system as well. And I think that take is going to be a big part of that. For the alpha, we're only really looking at weapon maintenance. So you have a weapon for him kit and you clean your weapon and your weapon yeah, yeah, gets clean. So this kind of answers your question and kind of just like a word. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. I'd just like to say thanks, obviously, to Dean, thanks to everybody who's spoken for us, and thank you to you all for coming here and having a really good show. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you all at the expo at uh, the end of September. But now, yeah, thank you very much.